Hello everyone. In the fourth lecture of chemical equilibrium, we are going to discuss a very important key factor of this chapter, which is known as the degree of advancement. So what about degree of advancement or xi? Okay, xi is the Greek letter X. So in discussions of reactions approaching an equilibrium, suppose some reaction is taking place. Initially, it is approaching from left to right. That means from initial stage to the equilibrium stage. So it should be helpful if a single variable that measures the progress of all species as they move from their initial amounts to their final amount, that is the equilibrium amounts. So this variable is called the degree of advancement or the extent of reaction variable, which we will symbol symbolize as xi. Okay. So let me elaborate this with an example where alpha amount of A, beta amount of B and react with each other and reversibly produce gamma amount of C and delta amount of D where this alpha, beta, gamma and delta are the appropriate stoichiometric coefficients. Now at the initiation at any time when the reaction is likely to start at that moment the respective amounts of A, B, C and D are N is 0, NB0, NC0 and ND0. And when the reaction has started, then at any instant during the reaction, that means at any moment you pick up, just stop the reaction. Suppose arbitrarily if it can be stopped, then stop the reaction and measure the amount of all the species, the reactants as well the products. Suppose A, B, C and D should have the amounts N, A, N, B, N, C and N, D respectively. Then how it can be expressed mathematically? Okay. So, if Na0 is the initial amount of reactant A and Na is uh, after some time T, then how much amount of A is consumed? Now the difference in a 0 minus in A. Okay. And when this amount is divided by the stoichiometric coefficient of A, then it should be equal to xi. Xi has three more expressions for particularly this reactions where B, C and D are other species and out of these three species B is the reactant among the reactants and C and D are among the products. Then also the initial amount of B minus the current amount of B that means their difference is the amount of B which is consumed divided by the stoichiometric coefficient of B. Okay, This is also xi that means the degree of advancement. Amount of C. Now amount of C here it, the order is reversed where NB0 minus NB or NA0 minus NA here NC minus NC0 that means the final amount minus the initial amount because here they are produced okay so the final amount minus initial amount here also the final amount minus initial amount. So for the products the order should be final minus initial and for the reactants the order should be initial minus final okay and they all would be divided by the respective stoichiometric coefficient and this value must be uh, equal to each other and it is it should be denoted as xi which is known as the degree of advancement so this is equation number one and if differentiation take uh, is uh, is the derivative of both sides taken then it should give here in a zero is constant so it should be minus dna by alpha okay because this is also another constant so it should remain along with this factor but this will be vanished for this is also a constant this is a constant but this is plus minus and this is uh, multiplication or div division so this will also remain with the derivative sign so minus dna by alpha similarly here nb0 differentiation of nb0 is 0 and differentiation of nb by beta should be what now minus dnb by beta and here the constant terms are here in the right part and here in the right part too so it should be dnc by gamma and dnd by delta okay and that is definitely equal to d xi okay the differential degree of advancement is d xi and this is equation number two. Now, if 
Dzi is positive then the reaction is taking place from left to right and vice versa. How? Now for Dzi greater than 0 that means for Dzi is, is positive. Okay it is positive. So this amount is positive that means DNH should have to be negative otherwise the overall amount cannot be positive. So if DNA is negative that means A is diminishing that means the amount of A is decreasing that means the reaction is taking place from left to right. On the other hand, if we think that this J is negative, then this is negative. So here is the negative sign already existing. So DNA must have to be positive. That means the amount of A is increasing. That means the reaction is taking place in the reverse direction that is from right to left. Okay. So, it is written here, it has been described here as for Dzi greater than 0, DNA and DNB are negative, corresponding to the disappearance of the reactants, while DNC and DND are positive and more of the products appear. Thus, Dzi greater than 0 corresponds to a reaction progressing from left to right as written. And the vice versa statement is also correct. That means if dj is negative, that means less than zero, then you have to take into account that the reaction is taking place from right to left. Then at equilibrium what? At equilibrium, this amount should be zero because none of them are appearing nor diminishing. Okay. So at equilibrium, dj should be zero. Now this equation 1 can be elaborated with an example. Suppose take the Haber's process of synthesis of ammonia where 3 moles of hydrogen reacts with 1 mole of nitrogen to form 2 moles of ammonia. Now initially there had been no ammonia. There had been only 3 moles of hydrogen and 1 mole of nitrogen. Okay. After some time, 1 fourth of 3 moles of hydrogen has been consumed. So 1 fourth of 3 is 0 0.75. So 2.25 moles of hydrogen is left unreacted well one fourth of nitrogen will also be consumed that means three fourth would be left unreacted that means 0 0.75 fraction okay and here how many how much amount of ammonia should be produced now 0 0.5 moles of ammonia should be produced because 0 0.75 hydrogen plus 0 0.25 nitrogen should produce 0 0.5 5 mole of ammonia okay now put these values in this reaction what should be the value of n a 0 minus n a na 0 0.75 what should be the value of n b 0 minus n b na 0 0.25 and what should be the value of n c minus n c 0 na it is 0 0.5 now divide 0 0.5 by 2 divide 0 0.25 by 1 and divide 0 0.75 by 3 all the results would give you 0 0.25 value and this is J. Okay, so hope this value of J is clear to all of you. Now move on to the factors on which J depends. The degree of advancement starts at 0. Obviously, it starts at 0 because at that moment Na equals to Ns0, isn't it? So it is definitely Na minus Na0 zero, Na zero Na should be 0. Okay. Uh, as the reaction ensues, that means when the reaction starts progressing, J can either increase, that means becomes positive, or decrease, that means become negative. According to the spontaneous direction of the reaction away from the initial composition and towards the equilibrium composition, that means what? Suppose equilibrium concentration has some value and the initial concentration has some value. Now you compare them. If the initial composition is more than the equilibrium composition for the reactant, then the reaction would move towards the left to right direction. Okay. And if equilibrium constant is greater than the initial concentration of the reactant, then the reaction definitely move to the right to left direction. It is very clear. That means whatever be the amount of the reactant or the product whatever it should be 
it should approach its equilibrium value okay so you have to note that xi cannot increase or decrease without limit however its range is governed by the initial composition and the reaction stoichiometry so the factors on which the, it depends are the initial composition and the reaction stoichiometry okay so you find that here xi uh, xi has some range which is governed by the initial composition and the reaction stoichiometry so we have to find out the range as well as uh, one more thing is said here that it has some limiting value okay so how this limiting value can be derived so let's elaborate this with some uh, example suppose let's take the example of synthesis of ammonia by Haber's process okay now here in this reaction in the previous example of the same reaction I took 3 moles of hydrogen 1 mole of nitrogen and 0 moles of ammonia now instead of that you just have a plus 1 here okay you just add 1 mole to that amount instead of 3 mole of hydrogen you have to take 4 mole of hydrogen instead of 1 mole of nitrogen you have to take 2 mole of nitrogen and instead of 0 moles of ammonia you are taking 1 mole of ammonia then what are the limits of xi so that is the question okay what is the value of xi okay so initially the n0 values correspondingly for hydrogen is 4 mole okay it is 4 mole for nitrogen is 2 mole and ammonia is 1 mole so it is noted here and the stoichiometric coefficients this one has 3 this one has 1 and this one has 2 so this values are also important for equation 1 now suppose we have to find out the limits the limits maximum positive limit of xi or maximum neg negative limit of xi first of all let us uh, let us assume that all the ammonia is reacting and it decomposes to hydrogen and nitrogen so if it happens then uh, at the end of the reaction what is the in ammonia value what is the value of amount of ammonia or number of moles of ammonia now the number of moles of ammonia is zero okay so number of moles of ammonia is zero at the end of the reaction so if we put this zero value in equation one so it should be zero minus one by two that means we are getting minus half value and this is the value of xi okay and we do not know what should be the value of number of moles of hydrogen or number of moles of nitrogen so just by putting minus of in place of xi in equation one we can easily find out the value of nh2 that means number of moles of hydrogen and number of moles of nitrogen just simply solve this equation okay so take this three into the right hand side it becomes minus three by two so four minus number of moles of hydrogen equal to minus three by two so the number of moles of hydrogen should be what now 4 plus 3 by 2 and what is the value of 4 plus 3 by 2 now 4 plus 3 by 2 is 11 by 2 okay similarly take this one to the right hand side so it becomes minus half so 2 minus this n equals to minus half so this n should be 2 plus half so 2 plus half means 5 by 2 so the number of n of nitrogen that means number of moles of nitrogen is 5 by 2 okay this is applicable for minus half value of psi so this is the negative limit maximum negative limit of psi where the maximum amount of uh, hydrogen that would uh, be that can be produced after complete decomposition of ammonia should be 11 by 2 mole that is 5.5 mole and that of ammonia should be 2.5 mole okay and one more thing if we think in the reversed order that means if all the left hand side reactants react to produce a complete product okay in that case we have to uh, determine which one is the limiting reagent out of this these two are reagents okay so which one is limiting reagent look here for each three mole of hydrogen one mole of nitrogen is required 
Now we are given four moles of hydrogen and one mole of nitrogen. Okay. So if three mole of hydrogen requires one mole of nitrogen, then four mole of hydrogen would require what? Now 1.3 mole of nitrogen. But nitrogen is given two moles. So if the left the reaction takes place from left to right, then hydrogen would be finished first. Okay. And 1.3 mole of nitrogen would be consumed. In that case, what should be the maximum value of xi? That means the maximum positive value of xi. Now you just put here 0. Okay. In that case, you get the value of xi 4 by 3. So 4 by 3 is now equal to 2 minus n of nitrogen by 1. Okay. So actually, what is the value of n of nitrogen? Now 2 minus 4 by 3 and this is definitely 2 minus 4 by 3 means 0 0.67 okay that means 2 by 3 and here ammonia ammonia was initially one mole and finally here we have to put n of ammonia so this value we do not know right now isn't it so n by n of ammonia minus 1 by 2 equals to 4 by 3 so this 2 would go here so 8 by 3 okay so amount of ammonia minus 1 equal to 8 by 3 so amount of ammonia should be 8 by 3 plus 1 okay so 8 by 3 plus 1 means 11 by 3 so this one is noted in the next slide so if nitrogen and ammonia react to form more ammonia nitrogen and hydrogen react to form more ammonia then xi will be positive as i have said the maximum xi will be determined by the limiting reagent as I have said the limiting reagent which one would be disappearing first is the limiting reagent. So does one deplete H2 first or N2 isn't it? So which one would deplete first that means disappear first. So since every one mole of nitrogen has uh, that reacts, reacts it consumes three mole of hydrogen. So we see when number of moles of hydrogen is 0 then number of mole of nitrogen would be 2 by 3 mole this is already discussed and thus H2 is the limiting agent so here in the left hand side out of these two reagents hydrogen is the limiting agent okay for this particular reaction mixture so the largest positive value of xi should be depending upon the amount of hydrogen that is 0 so just put 0 in place of number of moles of hydrogen so it is 4 minus 0 by 3 that is 4 by 3 so here the maximum positive value of xi is 4 by 3 mole okay and if 4 by 3 is put in place of xi then what should be the value of number of moles of ammonia and what should be the value of unreacted nitrogen now the value of unreacted nitrogen is will be 2 by 3 mole okay it is calculated already and if you try to find <coughs> the value of ammonia then it is 11 by 3 how 11 by 3 now move on to uh, this is determined already 11 by 3 moles okay uh, I have already told so here it is written number of ammonia number of moles of ammonia equal to 2 plus n0 of ammonia or 2 into 4 by 3 plus 1 mole so it is 11 by 3 mole is very simple okay so this way we can uh, xi is depending upon its limit okay is determined by its limit it has some maximum positive limit it has some maximum negative limit now suppose the reaction had been written as six hydrogen plus two nitrogen and producing four ammonia if this is the way the reaction is written that means the stoichiometric coefficients have been just doubled they have been multiplied by two then what should have been the limit of xi okay that means xi should have some limit them some negative limit to some positive limit initially what we have obtained now the negative limit of xi was 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 okay and the positive limit of xi was 4 by 3 isn't it that means minus half less than equal to xi less than equal to 4 by 3 that was the limit now here we find that the stoichiometric coefficients are just multiplied by 2 now if we consider equation number one then we find that xi is inversely proportional to alpha beta gamma or delta 
okay so if 2 is multiplied with alpha beta gamma delta then xi must be divided by 2 in order to get the same range okay now what was the initial range the minus half less than equal to xi less than equal to 4 by 3 so when 2 is multiplied with the stoichiometric coefficients then xi must be divided by 2 since xi and alpha beta gamma delta are inversely proportional to each other so half mole when minus half is divided by 2 it becomes minus 1 by 4 and when 4 by 3 is divided by 2 it becomes 2 by 3 so the limits now have become minus 1 by 4 mole less than equal to xi less than equal to 2 by 3 mole okay for the same initial mixture that means the initially it had been 4 mole it had been 2 mole and it had been 1 mole okay for that particular reaction mixture uh, it would have been the uh, range of xi so the xi is also governed by the stoichiometric coefficients also so that statement has also been verified now move on to the final example where dinitrogen pentoxide or nitrogen pentoxide simply is decomposing to produce nitrogen dioxide and oxygen so the value of alpha is 2 and here the value of gamma is 4 and the value of delta is 1 and beta is 0 because there is no second uh, reactant there okay now the question is xi is given okay so you have to find by how many moles must the amounts of each substance change to advance xi by one mole that means the re ad advancement reaction advancement should have the value one mole okay one more thing uh, i had um, forgotten to mention that the uh, uh, unit of xi is mole okay simply it is mole because it is n0 minus n divided by alpha so number of mole divided by some number so it should have the unit of mole okay now let us find out by putting the value xi equals to one mole so in equation one in the first term n0 a minus n0 by 2 equals to one mole so here a is n2 o5 so n0 n2 o5 minus n n, uh, n of n2 o5 by 2 equals to 1 mole and if you split them into two fractions then uh, the uh, n0 of n2 o5 by 2 minus n n2 o5 by 2 becomes 1 okay so this would yield the result this 2 would go here so it becomes 2 mole so their difference should be 2 mole similarly for nitrogen no2 the difference should be what now one should be 4 mole because here n0 of no2 by 4 minus n0 or n of no2 by 4 equals to 1 or for oxygen it should be uh, here actually i have said n0 first no for the products n should be said first n0 later so i rectify for the, in case of oxygen it here like this n of oxygen by 1 minus n0 of oxygen by 1 equals to 1 mole so it implies that 2 moles of N2O5 must disappear to advance xi by 1 mole similarly 4 mole of NO2 and 1 mole of oxygen must appear here I am using the term disappear here I have to say appear because they are the products here and it was the reactant the reactant is disappearing the products will be appearing so 4 mole of nitrogen dioxide and 1 mole of oxygen must appear as the 2 mole nitrogen pentoxide disappear. So and one more thing that you have to note that if the initial mixture does not contain N2O5, if you do not have N2O5, would Xi be able to advance or progress? The answer is no. So then xi cannot advance towards its positive value because in that case they would combine to produce n2o5 so xi would definitely have a negative value okay so that's about the advancement of reaction or xi so that's all for this lecture thank you have a nice day